Post number two, September 8th, 2010. I'm going to post what happened and link the video footage, but last night, everything got too real for me. I think I'm done messing around with this. I passed out pretty much immediately after making that thread. But last night, the Elegy of Emptiness statue, I had a dream about it. I dreamed that it was following me in my dream, that I would be minding my own business when I'd feel my neck hairs stand up on end. I would turn around, that thing, that horrible, lifeless statue would be staring with those empty eyes right at me, nearly inches away. In my dream, I remember calling it Ben, and never before had I had a dream that I could remember so vividly. But the important thing is, I did get some sleep, I suppose. Today, putting off playing the game as long as I could, I drove back up to that neighbourhood to see if the old man came back. As I expected, the car was still gone and no one was home. As I was walking back to my car, the man next door mowing the grass killed the power to his lawnmower and asked me if I was looking for someone. I told him that I was looking to talk to the old man that lived here, to which he told me what I already knew. He was moving. Trying a different avenue, I asked if the old man had any family or relatives I could talk to. I discovered that this old man had never been married, nor did he have any children or grandchildren through adoption. Starting to become worried, I asked one final question one that I should have asked from the beginning. Who was Ben? The man's expression turned grim, and I learned that four doors down, around eight years ago, on April 23rd, the man informed me that this was the same day as his anniversary. That's how he knew the specific date. There was an incident with a young boy named Ben in the neighbourhood. Shortly after, his parents moved, and despite any further attempts to talk to the man to get more information, he wouldn't divulge anything else. I went back and started playing again. I loaded up the game and immediately I jumped at the title screen where the mask flies by. The sound that played was not the normal whoosh sound, it was something much more higher pitched. I pressed start, bracing for the worst, but just like two nights ago, the files your turn and Ben were displayed. Truth be told, I looked at the Ben file earlier. It seems to fluctuate between displaying the owl save and not. I brought up the Ben file, hesitated for a moment, noticing that the stats were not the same as they originally were two days ago. It seemed like they had already completed the Stone Tower Temple this time. Summoning my courage, I selected it, Immediately, I was thrust into complete chaos. Sure enough, I was outside Stone Tower Temple. But that's about all that was expected. The zone itself wasn't called Stone Tower Temple, but rather S-T-O-N-E. And immediately, a dialogue box of complete gibberish that I couldn't make out greeted me. Link's body was distorted. His back was cocked violently to the side, where his posture was permanently disfigured. Link's expression was dull, almost monotonous. He had an expression on his face that I didn't recognise before. It was a blank look, as if he was dead. As Link stood there, his body spasmed irregularly, back and forth. I examined what had become of my avatar, and I noticed I had a C-button item I'd never seen before. Some kind of note. But pressing it did nothing. Sounds played back and forth that I didn't recognise from the game. Almost demonic in nature. And there was some kind of high-pitched yip 
or some kind of laugh or something playing in the background. I had all of two minutes to take in the environment before another one of those fucking Elegy of Emptiness statues was summoned. And immediately after, I was cut into the dawn of a new day screen. Except this time, it was without the six vertical lines subtext. I was a Deku scrub in Clock Town. This scene would normally play after the first time he travelled back in time. Tattle would say, what, what just happened? It's as if everything has... But instead of saying started over, she finished her remark in broken text as the laugh of the happy mask salesman played in the background. I was put back in control of my character, but from a fucked up camera angle. I was looking from behind the door to the clock tower, watching my avatar run around as a Deku scrub. Seeing as how I really had no place to go because I couldn't see anything, I begrudgingly went inside the door. There, I was greeted by the happy mask salesman, who simply told me, You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Before the screen whited out. I was in Tamina Field as a human again. I might as well have not been playing the same game anymore. I was being warped around and there was no sign of a day clock or anything. I took a moment to get my bearings as I looked around the field, and immediately I could tell that this was not normal. There were no enemies, and a twisted version of the Happy Mask Salesman's theme was playing. I decided to run towards Woodfall before I noticed a gathering of three figures off to the side, one of them being a pona. As I approached them, to my horror I saw the Happy Mask Salesman, the Skull Kid, and the Elegy of Emptiness statue just standing there. I figured maybe they were bugged out, but by now I told myself that I should know better. Nevertheless, I approached them carefully, and found that the Skull Kid was playing some kind of idle animation on loop. Same with Epona. And the Elegy of Emptiness statue was doing what it has been doing all along, just standing there eerily. It was the happy mask salesman that scared me more profoundly than the other two. He was too idle, wearing that shit-eating grin, but wherever I moved, his head slowly turned and followed me. I had not engaged in any dialogue with him, nor was I in combat with him, yet his head still continued to follow my movements. Reminded of my first encounter with the Skull Kid on top of Clock Tower, I pulled out my ocarina, to which the game played the ding sound when you're supposed to play your ocarina, and tried a song I hadn't played yet, the Happy Mask Salesman's own song, and the song that had been playing on loop back in day four, the Song of Healing. I finished playing the song, and as I did, an ear-piercing shriek blasted on my TV. The sky immediately started flashing. The Happy Mask Salesman's twisted theme song sped up, intensifying the fear inside me. And Link exploded into flames and died. The three figures stayed lit up during my death screen as they watched my lifeless body burn. I can't describe to you how sudden and terrifying the transition from eerie to terror it is. You're going to have to watch the video if you want to see firsthand. That same fear that caused me to lose sleep two days ago started to grip me again as I was met with the text. You've met with a horrible fate, haven't you? For the third time. There has to be some kind of meaning behind that. I had little time to ponder as I was immediately given another small cutscene of transforming into Zora and now I found myself in Great Temple Bay. Hesitant but curious to see what the game had in store for me, I slowly made my way towards the beach where I found Epona. I wondered why the game had decided to put her here. Was the game implying that she was trying to get a drink? Unable to take the mask off, I decided that riding the steed wasn't the reason she was placed there. Suddenly, I realised that Epona kept neighing, and the way she was angled made it look like she was trying to signal a point to me off in the distance. 
it was a hunch, but I dove into Great Bay and started swimming. Sure enough, I almost missed it. I found something in the bottom of the ocean. One last Elegy of Emptiness statue. I went down to examine it, and suddenly my Zora started doing a choking animation I had never seen a Zora do before. Which didn't even make sense, because Zoras can breathe underwater. Regardless, my character choked to death and died, and again the statue was the only thing that was highlighted in my death. I didn't respawn this time. I was booted back to the main menu as if I restarted the console. The press start screen was before me. I knew the only reason why it would put me here is because the save files had changed again. Taking a deep breath, I pressed start, and I was right. The new save files had told me about Ben. Now it made sense why the statue appeared when I tried to go to the laundry pool. The game must have anticipated how I would have tried to escape the day four clock town. The two save files told me his fate. As I suspected, Ben was dead. He had drowned. The game obviously isn't through with me. It taunts me with the new save files. It wants me to keep playing. It wants me to go further. But I'm done with this shit. I'm not touching any more of the files. This is already way too horrifying for me, and I don't even believe in the paranormal, but I'm running out of explanations. Why would someone send me this message? I don't understand it. I just get too depressed thinking about this. The footage is up here for those who want to see it and try and analyse it. Maybe there's some kind of coded message in the gibberish, or something symbolic in what I went through. I'm too emotionally and mentally drained to fuck with it anymore.